goes, wait, what was that? You're going to the market in Spain. Oh my God, that's amazing. Wait, do you know what vocab to use? Do you know the unwritten rules of the Spanish markets? Oh my God, ay Dios mío. Okay, don't worry because I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to go to the market in Spain and survive the experience. Are you ready? Vamos. Llegamos al mercado. We arrive at the market in Spain. Markets in Spain are such a wonderful experience, guys. I feel like an absolute giddy. Giddy is a foreigner. That's how we refer to foreigners, especially from the north of Europe. It's another way of gringo. I know that you guys know gringo very well. It's a synonym of gringo. So I feel like an absolute gringo giddy, gringo slash giddy, when I go to a Spanish market because I am in love with everything. I miss them so, so much. I live in England and we don't have that market life. We don't have that culture. Spanish people, my mom and my dad, they go to the market daily to buy fresh products like meat, fish, bread, especially bread. So it's a wonderful part of the Mediterranean culture. A lot of other Mediterranean countries do this, like for example, Italy. We live a slower life and a much healthier life. In England, I do my shopping realistically once a week. No, I don't even go to the shops to do it. I normally just order it in the house. In Spain, it's quite the experience. You go to the market, you get to, you know, look at the products that you want. You need to, you get to speak to the people in the market, in the different stools, and you get to ask them, oh, what season of fruits do you have? What products do you have on offer today? What do you recommend me to get? And I absolutely love that. But if you're not used to that, it can be a very overwhelming experience. Like I said, going to the market, it's a wonderful experience, but it can be rather intimidating. And there are certain unwritten rules you definitely need to know because otherwise the abuelas will take advantage of that. <laughs> okay, so you get to the market, what do you have to do first? ¿Qué tienes que hacer lo primero? You have to join the queue. Hay que unirse a la cola. Vale, ponerse a la cola. Cola is queue. Cola. It's also tail. Cola. It's not as easy as it sounds. Now, if you've got the ticket machine, you know, one of those that you get in the supermarkets and you just get a number, fine, that's fair enough. Nice and easy. You wait for your number. No trouble. But my friend, I'm afraid that's not Spain for you. That's not really the case in most mercados de barrio, neighborhood markets. In most of those, you need to ask, ¿Quién da la vez? This is your key phrase over there. Hola, buenas. ¿Quién da la vez? You need to say that with confidence, okay? Your right to the market. You've got your right to get your turn. ¿Quién da la vez? Say it loud and clear so everyone over there can hear you. You won't see a queue. This is not England. You won't see a queue whatsoever. It will be madness. People everywhere, women and men moving, you know. You need to ask quién da la vez so you know who is the last one. That's what quién da la vez means. Who is the last one? Quién da la vez? And then the lady in the corner might say yo. Or the man over there might say yo. And you know that you are behind that person. Vas detrás de esa persona. Okay, you are behind that person in the queue. Now, if anybody tries to push in, you could say something like, uh, Perdón, yo voy detrás de este señor. I'm behind this man. Or yo voy detrás de esta señora. I'm behind this lady. Just, you know, marking your territory over there. <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you, it is wild. It's wild. It happened to me at Christmas and Navidad. Um, a little lady tried to push in front of me. And you know, they know their territory. They know their seniors over there. And they know their way around. They know everybody by their first name. And they can tell you are young and inexperienced. And they're like... I'm gonna push in front of you and there's nothing you can do about it. So I did have to say to this woman, I keep looking at her. She kept looking at me. I kept looking again and I was like, she definitely arrived after me and she's definitely gonna go ahead of me. So I had to say to her, disculpe, excuse me. Perdón, voy yo, it's my turn, voy yo, okay, voy detrás de esta señora. I'm behind this woman, voy detrás de esta señora. She was like, huh. <laughs> Pero gané la batalla. I won the battle. Christmas is a tough time. Tough time to get in the Spanish market. <laughs> ¿Quién da la vez? Who is the last one? And another way to say it, ¿Quién es el último? You arrive, you need to say that loud and clear. 
¿Quién es el último? If there's only ladies, ¿quién es la última? La última. Types of shops. If you don't know this rule, I'm sure you're going to get this pattern very soon. Carnicería is where you buy the carne. The butchers is where you buy the meat. Pescadería is where you buy the fish. Pescado. Fishmongers. You see where I'm going with this, right? Frutería is where you buy fruta y verduras. Green roses. Okay? Fruit and vegetables. There are some places that also say in the letrero, in the sign, they also have fruteria y verdulería. But not anymore. I don't see the word verdulería that much. I just see fruteria. And that involves everything. Fruit and vegetables. Fruta y verdura. Panadería. What do you think we can buy in the panadería? ¿Qué compramos en la panadería? El pan. De toda la vida de Dios. El pan en la panadería. Bread. It's the bakery. Ay, qué rico está el pan de España. Spain's bread is so good, guys. So, so good. Nothing like it. I mean, I haven't been to France that much. I've only been to Paris. And I know bread is pretty good there as well. So, I'll give them that. But in Spain. <gasps> you also have the pastelería. Where you can buy pasteles y tartas. Y bollos. Y de todo. <laughs> okay? Pastelería. is where you buy your cakes. Let's go to a shop. Pasamos a una tienda that does not really exist in England and definitely not in the US. La pollería y huevería. This is how old and traditional Spain is, guys. We've got a specialist shop for chicken and eggs. Pollería and huevería, okay? Pollos and eggs. There's two types of pollerias, actually. There's the one where you go to buy the raw product, chicken, so you can cook it at home. And there's the polleria where you buy the rotisserie shop, polleria. They're not the same thing, but they're named the same. You need to know which one's which, basically. What do they sell in each of them? One trick is, if it says hueveria, it's the raw meat one. If it doesn't say hueveria, it's normally the rotisserie, the delicatessen shop, where you can buy a few bits and bobs already cooked for you. Charcutería. Uy, charcutería, mi favorita. ¿Qué se compra en la charcutería? Charcutería is where you buy embutidos, your cold meat. And... Muy importante, queso, the cheese, cold meats and cheese. You know, Spain is the country for the embutidos, the ibéricos. Ay, los ibéricos son vida, los ibéricos son maravillosos. I love ibéricos. What do I mean by that? We've got jamón, salchichón, chorizo, lomo. I could keep going all day. Me encantan todos, me vuelven loca. They drive me crazy. In Spain, we have a saying that is del cerdo hasta los andares. From the pig, even the way it walks. <laughs> I'm not lying. We eat everything from the pig. Se come todo. Literalmente, todo. So it's like a delicatessen stall. You normally buy all your cold meats in there, la pata de jamón de toda la vida, and el queso, the cheese. And we have so many different varieties of cheese. El queso de cabrales se me ocurre. Manchego is the most famous one, but cabrales from the north of Spain. This really shocked me when I was little because I went to Asturias and I saw all those caves where they keep cabrales and they leave it there to mature in the caves. It literally rots in the caves. Oh, pero que rico que está, por favor. It's so good, so tasty. Cabrales, if you haven't tasted it, mmm, muy muy bueno. It's like Roquefort. Very, sim very similar. And one little trick for you, un truco. If you don't know how to differentiate between good or bad jamón, not that there's bad jamón really, not in Spain anyway. If you see the word serrano, that's the cheapest variety that you can get. El serrano. Buenísimo para, una, para un bocata de jamón. Vamos, vamos. Delicioso. No le hago ascos a un serrano. Está muy bueno. However, the nicest ham you can have is the ibérico de bellota, okay? Ibérico, as in the pigs are only from the peninsula ibérica and they have been grown and they have eaten most of their life or at least the latest months of their life they have been eating acorns, bellota and it's a darker kind of pig and they taste, like you can definitely see the serrano is a lot lighter, the ham and the ibérico is a lot darker Oy, buenísimo. So if you have to pick in a restaurant or in a charcuteria, the serrano is going to be a lot cheaper and the ibérico is going to be quite a lot more expensive depending on the variety. For me, it's worth it. Para mí, lo vale. Pero bueno, 
Eso ya depende. And this is another shop that I absolutely love. Porque soy adicta a las aceitunas. Pepinillos. I'm addicted to olives. Pickles. Everything pickled, really. I love. Me encanta. And Spain is a paradise for that. La tienda de encurtidos. Tienda de encurtidos. Me pongo las botas. Ponerse las botas is when you eat a lot. Me pongo las botas con los encurtidos. What are the encurtidos? Aceitunas, frutos secos. The shop can also be called the frutos secos. Dried nuts, frutos secos. Patatas fritas, you know, the, the, the crisps or the chips, depending on where you're watching me from. Las de bolsa, the ones in a bag. And pickled products in general, pickled products. You want to know the price of something. Again, this is a very specific sentence. You don't just say, ¿cuánto es? How much is it? ¿Cuánto es? ¿Cuánto cuesta? How much does it cost? Like we say in, in all the shops, like, I don't know, clothes shop, for example. En el mercado se utiliza a como. A como el kilo de ternera. A como el kilo de langostinos. A como. And then the product that you want. At how, that's the translation. At how much is it, okay? We could also say, a cuánto está. A como está, or a como el, and then the product, or a cuánto está. A cuánto el kilo de tomates. So that's when you want to ask for specific prices, okay? A cuánto está, and then you can say, ah, vale, ponme un kilo, give me a kilo of it. Vale, ponme un kilo. At the end, once you've grabbed all your bits and bobs that you want from that shop, from that stall, you might want to say, ¿Cuánto es? How much is it? And then you pay. Vale? Se paga. Okay, vamos a pedir. You know what you're having, you know which shops you have to go to. You normally have a carrito with you because remember in Spain, there's no trolleys in there. You need to take your own trolley from your house. The other day I was, I was having, the other day at Christmas, I was pulling my grandma's trolley and I felt like a proper señora. I've never felt so old in my life going to the mercado. Iba con el mercado con mi carrito. And you put the bags in there. It is actually really useful. And now I'm in the market looking for a trolley for one of those. But then again, I wouldn't really use it in England because we don't walk to the markets. There's no markets really. Ordering, how would you say it? How would you sound native when ordering anything? Ponme, ponme un kilo de manzanas. Ponme un kilo de naranjas. Give me a kilo of. Ponme medio kilo de, yo que sé, panceta, whatever, okay? Medio kilo, un kilo, we work in kilos and gramos in Spain. And we use the word ponme, give me, ponme, or me pones. This is also very useful for drinks and meals in general. Me pones un pincho de tortilla. Me pones una caña, una cerveza. Caña is the slang for beer in Spain. Cerveza is like, it's like a small beer. Ponme, me pones. Me das. We are very informal, guys. We don't need to call anybody usted. We just go and say, hola, buenos días. Me pones un kilo de mandarinas. Can you give me a, a kilo of mandarins? You don't have to say por favor all the time. You don't have to say, I would like, quisiera, me gustaría. I know that's what they teach you in school. It is not how we actually speak. Important, another unwritten rule over here in the market, do not touch the products. It is very tempting when you see all of those fruits, which are, by the way, next level, because in Spain we get so much sunshine. I was holding a tomate, like this. It was almost as big as my head, guys, that tomate. Un tomate enorme. Parecía una sandía. It was like a watermelon. That one of the watermelons that they sell me in England. The fruit and the vegetables are next level quality wise. They are amazing. And they actually taste like they should taste. Because, oh, and I have to moan about this. Lately in England, I keep getting fruit that does not really taste good. It doesn't taste the fruit. And I know that most of these fruits are coming from Spain as well. But I don't know, we must get sent the leftovers of it. <laughs> they don't send us the good ones, guys. They keep the good ones for themselves, I think. It's very tempting to touch the fruits, to have a feel about them, but we never touch them. You ask the frutero or I mean, in the butchers, you obviously there's a glass, so you can't touch anything. If you're in the fruteria, you need to ask the frutero, uh, perdona, to know, Jose, Jose, me pones medio kilo de tomates, de estos. 
and he will select them for you. He or she will select them for you. They know best. You might want to tell them que estén muy maduros. I want them good to go. Que estén para hoy. I want them to eat them today. Or poco maduros. My mom ordered a kilo of tomatoes for me to take to England. <laughs> I know, guys. I know it's sad. But she did, and I was so happy bringing back some tomatoes with me, some good quality tomatoes with me. She said, los quiero poco maduros, poco maduros. I don't want them ripe, okay? I want them green so they last a few weeks. Los quiero poco maduros, poco maduros. And the wonderful fruteros and fruteras from Spain, they will select the best ones for you. They always do, they're great. Useful phrases that you could also use. ¿Cuál es la fruta de temporada? What's the seasonal fruit? ¿Cuál es la fruta de temporada? Tenemos unos fresones de temporada. Están buenísimos. That's what they would say to you. We've got some strawberries, seasonal strawberries. They're great. Tienes que probarlas. You need to try them. They even give you freebies sometimes. They let you try them before you buy them. ¿Qué tenéis de oferta? ¿Qué tenéis de oferta? What's on offer? ¿Qué tenéis de oferta? ¿Qué me aconsejas? What do you recommend me to get? ¿Qué me aconsejas? ¿Qué puedo llevarme hoy? What can I get today? You, you know, normally Spain is all about relationships. People are very friendly, son amistosos. It's not only a transaction, they become part of your circle of trust, you know? They know that they're gonna give you something good because if they don't, you're gonna go back tomorrow and say, hey, Jose, el melón que me has dado estaba malísimo. The melon you gave me yesterday was bad. Okay, they like to keep their customers happy. It's more of a personal experience. Whereas in England, I feel that if the Sainsbury's delivery man was to bring me something bad, I wouldn't really, I would just return it or, you know, it's not that kind of personal relationship. Y ya está, chicos. You have paid as pagado. Congratulations. You have survived your first experience in a Spanish market, which was not an easy task. So, enhorabuena. If you want to learn real Spanish, subscribe and nos vemos en la próxima. See you in the next one. Adiós.